Good morning guys and welcome to Sydney. It's a very beautiful morning. We actually just have the bridge right there behind our hotel. We just wandered out to get some breakfast because me and my mum are climbing the Sydney Harbour Bridge this morning. Uh, unfortunately we're not allowed to take any like camera equipment, phones, any loose items up there so I won't be able to actually vlog us climbing it which is a bit of a shame. Uh, but I'll vlog as much as I can and then later on this afternoon we are just going off exploring Sydney. So we only have three days here so this is our kind of like day exploring the city so it should be good. Just walking up to the bridge now. Time to climb. Under the bridge. So we're walking under the Sydney Harbour Bridge. About to go up. So I was telling Paul that we we're going to climb this and he was terrified for us. He's not the biggest fan of heights. So he was like, you guys are crazy, why are you climbing the bridge? Why would you do that? <laughs> um, I was like, because it's what you do, you come to Sydney, you climb the Sydney Harbour Bridge. I need to tell you the story about this guy. This is his son. This is Charles. Charles is badass. Isn't he, Mum? He is. Charles is an absolute badass. And then he's behind you. Where is he? Where's Charles? There's Charles. Legend. Okay, so Charles's story. So this man must be at least 90. Like in his 80s. I don't know. He's old. But he climbed the Sydney Harbour Bridge illegally in 1958 before he went off to fight in the Vietnam War. Just him and his for a laugh, him and his friend climbed the Sydney Harbour Bridge before you were ever able to climb it. And then, it, he's a helicopter pilot, him and his son are both helicopter pilots. And then in 1966, he illegally flew his helicopter underneath the bridge. <laughs> like, this guy is an <laughs> absolute legend. legend. Like, as soon as the, our tour guide Nicola asked, um, so has anyone climbed the bridge before? He was like, yeah, I have. And she was like, oh, when did you climb it? And he was like, 1958. And she was like, um, you couldn't. And he was like, yeah, I just did it with my friend. Mm. Like, he was brilliant. And him and his son were in front of us the entire time. They were both lovely. Um, lovely his, he, Charles, works in Sydney, has worked in Sydney, I think like almost his entire career flying, 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 flying like flying helicopter, helicopters. Um, flying helicopters. And his son works on Western Australia taking 
um, the workers out to the oil rigs and stuff but they were just such lovely people like giving us like some tips and stuff of what yeah. to do um, so yeah they're just lovely and it was such a nice climb like we learned so much about the bridge so much about Sydney so much about the Opera House like everything mm -hmm. so definitely and got some stunning views. worth doing it and we did, we're so lucky with the weather that it's so like it's so sunny today we're so lucky it's just a shame that we can take cameras or anything up but the view from up there is spectacular like you can see everything and just the information about the bridge the fact that it, how many years did it take just to paint the underside here 13 years it took 13 years to paint from one side of the underside to the other we also learned that they're still trying to figure out a way to paint the top of it which is why it's getting a bit rusty because when they were doing it with like a pulley system before um, one of the cords broke and the paint fell. Didn't hit anyone. Um, but they're still trying to figure out how to kind of get it painted again, I guess. There's the legend! Hey! The legend himself! <laughs> it's Charles! <laughs> and I'm sorry, I'm Brendan. And Brendan! Hello! The, I was just talking about you guys. <laughs> totally I'm just <laughs> such yes. a legend. All right, go and enjoy. Brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> that man. Just fantastic. Yeah, so among other things we learned about the bridge, there was only three people that died from falling. 16 people died in total, but a lot of that was from the lead paint. So yeah, and it took how many years to build? 16? 16 years to build and only three people fell and died. And one, one guy fell and lived. Yeah, and only had two cracked ribs. Yeah. Fell into the water. Fell in, when he fell into the water. They previously took the scuba diving force to help in case he was to take help. He kept his hands over his, his eyes and his ears so his eyes wouldn't pop out the pressure and explode his brain. Yep. That. So I think we're just going to head back to the hotel and get showered and changed because wearing the boiler suits and everything it yeah, got really hot and sweaty yeah. climbing for three hours in this. Um, so we're going to get changed and then head out for lunch because I don't know about you mum but I am starving. Uh, and then we're going to explore some more Sydney. Okay, so what was your favourite fact? you learned on the bridge climb? Um, I think probably the fact that the majority of the steel to make the bridge actually came from Birmingham, Manchester. Middlesbrough. Middlesbrough, well it was in England. <laughs> because at that time it would have taken six weeks in the boat to bring yeah. that over. So I wonder how many boats actually brought it over because there was so much of it. Yeah, but she said as well that it's only 21% of the steel on the bridges from it's Australia. And the rest of it's from England. I really like what she was telling us about the, the rivets, like the little ball things that need to be hammered in. And the, to get them out into the middle, there would be a guy who was who was heating them up, who would then throw it, like physically throw this like boiling hot piece of metal. The orphans here. Boiling hot piece of metal into the middle for someone else to have a bucket to catch it. Like that is insane. Thank you. That is insane. Like, can you imagine just this this massive like boiling hot piece of metal flying at you across like the bridge? And then there was the third person there who had to hammer it in. But she said obviously they didn't catch all of them. So they think that the bottom of Sydney Harbour and there's at least like 10,000 rivets yeah. at the bottom. But then she also said consider during how many rivets were on the whole thing? Like over 200 and something millions, I don't know. So considering how many are actually on the bridge, they didn't really drop that many over 16 years, that's not too bad. All right, time for food, starving. Having some spaghetti, thank you. Some chips on the side and my mum is having buns. Mm. Nice well earned, huh? Well earned. Definitely. So we are now about to do one of my mum's favourite holiday activities, <laughs> which is get on a city sightseeing tour bus. Well, so it just feels like it's a good idea because what you can do is you wouldn't see what places you would like to go and say, oh there it is, let's go and see that. Yeah. You're good. So we were right up the top of that this morning, right up there, just beneath the flags. You can, oh, you can actually see a group climbing it right now. Can you? Yeah. Oh, see, there they are. Little oh, ant people. That's where we were this morning. It was really good. <laughs>
world famous opera house. We're here. We're gonna go see if there's a tour. So before we go and see by getting a tour of the opera house, which I hope is still running because it's getting quite late in the afternoon now. My mum wants to go and get some ice cream, so we're just having a little wander down here to see if there's anywhere that we can get that. Oh yeah, there's an ice cream shop right there. Oh, fantastic. So it's just over here. Do we not need to go down here, Mum? Steps. Okay, we'll go down here. Massive cruise ship. Alright, ice cream's demolished. Now we're heading up to the opera house to see if we can get on a tour around it. So we, are, we did learn some interesting facts about the opera house this morning when we climbed the bridge. So one of them was that all of the spheres, the big things, point, not shell things, I don't yeah, know. Yeah, kind of shells have a... Are supposed to look like the sails on a sailboat. But if you deconstructed them all and took them all apart, they would make a perfect sphere. And the guy that did the engineering for it estimated that it would take three to four years. Yes, and it would cost and 16 million. It, and it would cost 16 million. And how long did it take? It took 16 years. 16 years, and it cost them over 100 million. Yeah, so it was just a little bit off on his planning. Um, but yeah. And what me and my mum said is when we arrived, we completely never realised that it, I mean I don't even know if you can see it in the camera, I'm sure you can. Yeah, it's like crisscross patterns. Yeah, we always thought it was just like plain white. It really is such like an iconic view, isn't it? You always see it. Steps. <laughs> All right, let's see how we can get inside. Is it around here? So we're on the five o'clock tour. So we're just gonna have a little walk in the botanical gardens because we don't need to be back for like another 45 minutes. So we're gonna kill some time. Got a nice shot of the opera house and the bridge in the background. Very nice. And out here. So we're just sitting here watching all of the kind of air traffic and boat traffic. It's so busy, like Sydney Harbour is so busy, like it's just full. There's like two little seaplanes up there. And there's so many like yachts and boats and stuff and ferries. Like when we were on the top of um, the top of the bridge you could really see how much traffic there was. Um, but our tour guide was saying about on Australia Day that it was 10 times worse on the water. There was boats everywhere, people had their yachts out, ferries here, there and everywhere, like it was no space. And then they had a big naval ship right in the middle and there was like fighter jets coming off of the naval ship. And this shows that the, literally the weirdest thing for me, just made yeah. me laugh, was that Qantas were showing off their biggest airplane in their fleet and they were just like cruising it above Sydney Harbour, like just, just, just right. an empty air, like, lots of owner. <laughs> yeah, like, like just, just like show, showboating their plane, like I found that so strange. Oh yeah, and this is a little island that was kind of like Sydney's answer to Alcatraz. It's tiny. They basically just used to put prisoners on it and starve them for three weeks. Because apparently there's a lot of sharks in the harbour, so. The big cruise ship's leaving. Right behind the opera house. So, uh, tour number two of the day. Headsets number two. I can't hear this thing to me. <laughs> Unfortunately, I'll get something else to you. <laughs>
just really glad that um, we were talking about what we learned about the architect who designed this very building. What was his name? Johan something like Utsun, Johan Utsun from Copenhagen in Denmark spent what 10 years of his life yes. like designing it and helping the engineers construct it. He was the architect behind it. He was the vision. Um, and then Australian government changed, it was costing too much money, all this, so they, did the, he resigned eventually, but there was, they kicked him off of basically they kicked him off of the project. And it, what is so sad is that he went back to Denmark and he never came back to Australia, so he never actually saw this building with his own eyes, the building that he imagined and created, he never ever got to see it, but it was so cool. They did invite him back, but that, by that yeah, time... Yeah, they invited him back, but he was too ill and it was a couple of years before he died, but they did give him said was basically they would have built a nice so young with no Yeah, so I mean it's not much of a and also his son it's a great awesome. award. Um, but it's a shame that he was never actually able to come back to Australia to see it for himself. I mean I'm sure he saw pictures, but yeah. still. But no the tour was good. Um, it took just about an hour. Um, so we learned a lot more about the Sydney Opera House, which is right behind me. And it is gorgeous um, inside. And it is beautiful inside. It is beautiful. And we were lucky because the, there's a performance on tonight. It's like the Chinese New Year, so there's like a, a little orchestra, a very young orchestra, yeah, uh, for the Chinese New Year that are performing there tonight. And while we went in, because we were the last tour of the day, I'm sorry for being into you, um, they were just like warming up all of their instruments and stuff, so we did actually get to hear some of the acoustics in. Um, in the concert hall, so that was nice as well. Not a lot of tours will get to do that. So that was good. And it's not just one hall, there's four. There's three yeah, small ones the and, then, and then the main hall. So yeah. So now we're just gonna head back. We're heading back to the sightseeing bus. Yes, we are. Is that where we're going? Yeah. So, <coughs> heading back to the bus, seeing a little bit more and then, and then we'll see. We'll see where the wind blows us at this point because it's very windy. <laughs> Was that that way? Okay. Okay, let's go. Do I not just look bald? No, you do. From the front, like, have a bald face. No. Like, I'm trying a new hairstyle out because, uh, I do. Like, I look, oh my god, I don't even look like I have hair from the front. No, you do. Oh my god. I'm trying out a new hairstyle because, uh, it's been so windy all day, like, from the bridge climb. Um, yeah, the opera. outside the opera house, my hair is just mental. So, if we're going on an open top bus again. <laughs> I want to have it out of my face. So, this is happening. Just getting some more sun. It's so nice to be in the sun again. Like, I, I'm not like you, like, I'm not obsessed with getting no, sun. No, I like the breeze. But, oh my god, to have sun after Cairns. <gasps> wow. It's gorgeous. How many? How many videos did I even put up in Cairns? It's not that many. I don't think it was many because it's I did what? Was the Great Barrier Reef and then Skyrail. Mm hmm. Yeah, so many of our activities got cancelled. But yeah, Sydney's shaping up to be better. But we did make a reservation for the Indian for tomorrow. Um, so dinner was fine, it was nice. We're just heading back to the hotel. It's been such a long and busy day, so we're both quite tired. We're both looking forward to getting to bed because tomorrow we are going to Bondi Beach and I have a surf lesson, so I get to surf on Bondi Beach. Yes. Hopefully, not gonna get eaten by a shark. <laughs> you have to oh, puppy. Yeah. Heading back to the hotel. <laughs> So we're just almost back at the hotel now. So if you made it to the end of the 
this vlog, which I'm not even sure you will because I'm sure it's probably very long, then if you enjoyed it, please do give it a thumbs up as always. And subscribe below if you want to see some more. And I will see you guys tomorrow because we are heading to Ponaich. Bye!